Josh, as many of you know, has been with Fora for uh, several years, and that, that is the Fort Ord Reuse Authority, for those of you that don't know our little acronyms we love to use. He's recently been promoted to Assistant Executive Officer, and he's going to give us a little update from what we talked about in May, for those of you that were at our Regional Economic Summit, and we heard from Bruce Katz about Opportunity Zones and some other things. So I thought it'd be nice to just take a few minutes this morning have Josh give us a quick update on where we are with that Opportunity Zone effort and how that's rolling out throughout the region. So, Josh. Which one is the advance, that one? All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kate. And this is quite a group. It's really an honor to be up here in front of you with this update uh, for the Opportunity Zone topic, which is a new federal tax policy that was uh, part of the 2017 tax overhaul from uh, the federal government. But before jumping into that topic of the day, I'll just take a few moments to give a background on uh, the Fort Ord Reuse Authority and our work there in, in regional economic development. Uh, how many folks here are familiar with the Fort Ord Reuse Authority? Let me see some hands. Okay, a lot of hands, but a lot of folks may be uh, benefiting from this introduction. So uh, FORA was created in 1994 to oversee the uh, reuse, the educationally centered reuse of the former Fort Ord, which on this map here is, is a green area. And it's a 45 square mile area just northeast of us between here and Salinas. And uh, this uh, program is the largest military base reuse project in the country and uh, has yielded many uh, wonderful new assets for the region. Most importantly, the California State University Monterey Bay, which is the centerpiece of the reuse there, and it's continuing to build and grow. There's a campus with uh, 7,100 students and growing there. And it's really driving the uh, economic development component of the reuse, which is largely centered in the areas bordering the campus. And if you notice on this map, there is a, uh, some two yellow areas, uh, one down in the city of Salina, uh, Seaside and one up on, on the north end of the uh, Fort Ord area. And those are two of the opportunity zones in our regions. I'll get into more of that later. But the Fort Ord Reuse Authority is overseen by a 23-member board of directors and 13 voting members. All of the elected officials, or many elected officials from all of the uh, cities here, from, from Carmel to Salinas, and they have overseen a impressive reuse process that's included major munitions and explosives remediation, environmental contamination uh, remediation, uh, transportation infrastructure investments, building removal, if you can imagine, an army base that existed to train infantry for 100 years was, uh, is not well suited to uh, the needs of modern communities, and so there's been a significant amount of work undertaken to make that happen. And so the, the larger picture here is looking kind of northeast over what's the new uh, VADOD clinic, which is serving active and retired military. It's the first clinic of its kind in the country that integrates these two um, veterans and active duty communities. And that's right in the city of Marina, and all that area around there is part of a specific plan, a development area that is squarely within this opportunity zone. So it's an exciting new uh, potential to, to really move that project forward. The other picture is looking kind of southwest towards the Monterey Peninsula, overlooking the Marina Airport. And the Marina Airport is owned by the city of Marina. It's also bordered by a large piece of land that the University of California owns, which was envisioned as a major job center for the reuse. And that's something that we're continuing to work hard on finding a way to make that vision come to life. I thought it was fitting that Rafa's uh, video was, was filmed uh, out in the area that, that was, is to, help, to hold all of these new um, job center activities. So, so we'll be working hard on that. But these are some of the things that can be activated by the creation of this new uh, federal Opportunity Zone in Marina. So I'll, I'll just take uh, another moment to reflect on, on the topic that Rafa touched on and Kate, which is, you know, I've been at uh, Fora now for about six years, a little over six years, and I started as a planner, and then I became this economic development person, 
And now I've got this new title. I guess the good news is my, my job title keeps going in the right direction, even though it changes a lot. But, um, over that time, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to work with many of you in the room on kind of building a regional capacity. And I think enough's been said about the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership here. It's, it's really great to have this cross-sector uh, partnership active uh, addressing these hard problems. The ag tech ecosystem in, in Salinas is, is an incredibly vital uh, program that really was a partnership between the city and the ag industry that's yielding not only benefits for the industry directly, but driving innovation and entrepreneurship across the region. And so that's, that's an, one program. The Startup Monterey Bay program, which is an entrepreneurship program centered at CSUMB, supported by the Fort Ord Reeves Authority Board, has now just celebrated its 10th year. And there's been hundreds of, of entrepreneurs that have come through the program and gone on to start and grow businesses here. Similarly, in Santa Cruz, Doug Erickson and his team are working with the city and the university to really grow this entrepreneurship system uh, there. I mean, there's a thriving entrepreneurship system. I'm one of the people that lives in Santa Cruz and commutes across the Pajaro River to Marina to go to work every day. I do have a carpool group, by the way. <laughs> we have um, also, uh, with Sean Cometh and John Avella at CSUMB, just held our second annual, I, I think it's annual, right, Sean? The uh, Sustainable Hospitality Summit, which has engaged the hospitality industry on issues around sustainability energy efficiency and all of that. So that's another one of these great programs, the Bright Futures program, which is integrating data about uh, education outcomes and career pathways from cradle to career. That's another program that didn't exist when I started and is now adding value to our region. Jacob Martinez and his group in Watsonville and Salinas engaging the Latino youth through Digital Nest and, and delivering on the demand for diversity in tech. We just uh, were there supporting their Digital Nest, uh, Nest Flight Conference, which is really cool. And then, of course, the Monterey Bay Defense Alliance, Dino Pick and Hans Uslar and Fred Muir working to ensure the retention of our uh, military missions here, which is a critical part not only to our local economy, but to our national economy. And I'd be remiss if I didn't, of course, mention the Monterey Bay DART program. That's the Monterey Bay Drone Automation and Robotics Technology Initiative that I've been central to working with uh, Chris Bly and others with great support from CSUMB and UCSC to uh, bring together this regional economic development initiative aligning industry, academia, and government towards these future growth sectors. And I'm pleased to announce today that we'll be returning to this room June 26, 2020, next year, for the second annual Monterey Bay DART Symposium. So I hope you all be able to join us. And I think it's fitting to, to put this slide up here because it's what our, our man Bruce Katz talked about this spring when he was here uh, talking about the new localism, which is kind of innovation and civic governance, new ways of public and private organizations working together to achieve results. And we had the chance to engage with Bruce when he was here. Uh, he's a really incredible thought leader. We took him around, toured him around some of our opportunity zones. And he's telling us all about his work with the Accelerator for America, which is Eric Garcetti's civic governance innovator. So we've continued to track what they've been doing around the country and try to bring those ideas to bear in our community. <clears throat> so for those who may not be familiar, uh, the Opportunity Zone federal tax policy has three benefits for uh, private investors to move money that's uh, on the sidelines, realizing capital gains, and putting them to work in specific locations around the country. There's temporary tax deferrals, a step up in basis, basis over two time periods, five and seven years, if the money is, re, is held in investment in these zones. And then after 10 years, you, you, they realize a permanent tax exclusion for any gains on those investments. So there's a real incentive to take this private capital and put it to work in certain areas. Now, there's 8,700 of these zones across the country. So it's a competitive landscape. There's 580 zones in California. We have 14 of them in our region in three, three counties. The city of Santa Cruz, the county of Santa Cruz has two zones, downtown Santa Cruz and around Capitola. 
uh, the city of Seaside, right, right off their downtown areas, got a small cup two zones. These are all census tracts. That was the basis for their designation. City of Marina, I already mentioned, it's, it's one of the more interesting ones in my, my view because of all the unique assets on Fort Ord. Downtown Salinas and all around there, and then down in King City, and then a large red, the red area up in uh, San Benito County. So there's a lot uh, to, to consider in all of these and, and a lot of detail underlying these polygons on the map. Taking the, the guidance from Bruce Katz and his, and his colleagues at Accelerator for America, we've worked with the city of Santa Cruz, the city of Salinas, and the city of Marina to produce these Opportunity Zone Investment Prospectus. These are guides for the market. This is one of the kind of best practices that's being recommended by what, for communities to describe the opportunities in their zones and put them out to the market to attract the attention of investors. And the good news is there's already activity that's happening. Uh, the, the picture on the lower right is, is a pro project that's it's an exciting project for the city of Seaside that's working its way through approval processes, which is a multifamily development on Broadway. And this would be the first of its kind, and certainly in the time frame that I've been around in a long time, to see a new multifamily project happening there. The city of Santa Cruz has many projects underway in the downtown area. All of these are benefiting from the uh, location in the zone. So, we're going to continue to watch and, and uh, monitor the market, the best practices, and all of the uh, guidance that's being put out there on the national stage. If you just Google Opportunity Zones, there's a lot of information out there. And then uh, finally, uh, a really exciting development that uh, we're working with the city of Marina at the Marina Airport to ensure that Joby Aviation can make a home in our region to build their uh, incredible electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This would be a major new industry for our area. Currently, they're located in Santa Cruz, and if we're lucky, they, they will secure this uh, very large clean tech manufacturing facility right off the background of where Rafa was doing his, his spoken word. So that's a really exciting future, and, and, and uh, all of this is being empowered by the Opportunity Zone program. So um, with that, I, I'll kind of bring my remarks to a close with an invitation for all of you in the room to join us. If we could get 450 people to our uh, Opportunity Zone Investment Forum, that would be a huge hit. Um, it's in the app. If you want to, it's a very nominal price to come. It's being uh, put together by a collection of, of, of interested communities, those with the zones in them. Come to the CSUMB Salinas City Center, which is squarely in the Opportunity Zone in Salinas, to hear from statewide policymakers, kind of movers in that statewide space, and then professionals who deal with accounting and, and deal making on the real estate and entrepreneurship side. So I uh, will be here throughout the day. Please uh, make note of all of this, and I'm a public servant and very uh, happy to talk and support uh, any great initiatives that you all might want to talk about. So um, with that, I'll pass it back to Kate, and I look forward to the keynote of the day.